So item 7.2 is an item that I am bringing consideration of an informal report on a CAL FIRE grant application currently being prepared by the Lake County Resource Conservation District, the RCD. So when we met um, for our governance meeting, I shared with um, the board that the um, RCD has brought on a grant writer and that um, I would be looking for support um, from the board um, to help get the RCD um, up and running. It's gonna be about a three year project of uh, developing that uh, capacity there. So this, um, this grant writer is um, putting together a CAL FIRE fire prevention grant on behalf of the county. And I wanna turn it over to CAO Parker to kind of um, go over the details. Yes, thank you, Chair. And actually, I'm going to bring up Matthew and Terry Logston to come to speak to this directly. They've been more involved than I have been. This is a very exciting um, turn of events for the Lake County Resource Conservation District to build the capacity uh, of them and have a grant writer on staff because as you know, many of you have worked with the director, uh, Harry Lyons, for a number of years and they have been under-resourced like so many organizations in Lake County. And as the RCD is a special district of the state of California, it gives them more opportunities, more funding opportunities. And so uh, to have uh, a grant writer writing this grant is an exciting, you know, it's great for all of Lake County. Um, some of the specifics in this grant, you know, we have uh, had funding from USGS to do the LIDAR work. So there is what's called a derivative um, of the products. Once you do the actual mapping, there's, how do I put it? There's several ways you can look at the data and use it. And so uh, having that fully funded in this grant is also very important. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a, a good um, overview of, of the grant development. Obviously in the memo that it broke down uh, some different areas of focus that the grant is looking to fund uh, that include a cost share program for property owners with hazardous trees near their homes, development of LIDAR derivatives as Terry, as Terry raised, and I wanted to also highlight that the Department of Conservation is bringing considerable funding to that effort, uh, and some program management capacity building for the RCD, which uh, Supervisor Paiska mentioned is expected to be a multi-year effort and constructing fuel breaks along ingress and egress routes throughout Lake County and areas affected by tree mortality. Uh, so the, that was the impetus to trying to meet those significant community needs was the impetus behind developing this grant application in the first place. This is one of the most um, you know, standard means of funding work of this type. And the RCD had the capacity to develop the grant application. Uh, so we've moved forward with an, an agreement or developed an agreement with RCD to complete that work. Did you want to add anything? No, I don't. I want to hear, I want to hear any questions that the board may have. Okay. Um, so I am just so grateful to the RCD and the Risk Reduction Authority and the Fire Safe Council and the collaborations that just continue. Uh, this is a $5 million grant. Clerk is also submitting a $5 million grant. So it's a potential for $10 million to come into the county through the fire prevention grants. And we have um, consulted with the new pre-fire chief Wink um, to make sure that these uh, both these applications are complementary. They're not uh, going to be competitive in any way, which is uh, what CAL FIRE wants to see. We have um, kind of tweaked the numbers and made it, it to kind of hit that sweet spot. So we're not asking for too much, but we're asking for, for uh, enough to get started. So obviously in this is um, fuels work that's gonna happen on our right ways and I think we know who's gonna be doing that work. So um, I just wanted to bring this to the board um, 
as an informational item and see if there's any questions um, that anybody has. Supervisor Spatier? Yeah, no, I think that uh, supporting this is, is the obvious uh, direction to go. Um, I'm just looking through your, your memo, it's uh, recollecting uh, what I reviewed. Why is, where's the $13,875 coming from? Because it talks about the $25,000 threshold, which is a county threshold, not a uh, RCD threshold. Who, who said yes? Was that our CAO Parker? Okay, it wasn't very detailed. Uh, just wanted to make sure that, that that was the case. I support that. I think that um, especially if it helps to fill in the, get the void afterwards once the grant is received. Uh, so I see this as being an investment into more opportunities later on. Um, so yeah, no, in support, appreciate you bringing this to us so that we're aware of the work that's happening and uh, uh, what's being requested. Vice Chair Simon? Just more of a comment that the uh, Lake County Risk Reduction Authority did approve uh, a letter of support yesterday on this. Um, obviously, we're all in coordination and collaboration of moving forward with bringing as much funds into the county as possible. There were four letters that we approved for grants yesterday at the RRA. So happy to see that happen in the collaboration. And obviously, I want to thank our uh, climate resiliency officers for, for pushing these things through and working hard to get it. I know a lot of folks did a lot of work to get it to this point. So, you know, I think the collaboration just continues to be enhanced, uh, you know, as we move forward and filling in and building our capacity that we've been looking to do over the last few years. So just wanted to report on that and in complete support of this today. Supervisor Green? Yeah, also in uh, uh, great support of this. Just, just, and I don't know if the work's already done on this, but the only thing I would add is um, hazardous trees near homes, also hazardous trees in riparian corridors. Um, there's such a great need, especially in our uh, hitch impacted uh, streams. Um, to get brush clearing done. It's kind of odd to see a lot of lemming getting done uh, on ag lands, but uh, uh, it isn't just cost, I don't think. I think there's also aversion to the uh, complexity of the permitting process and stuff like that. So uh, definitely support cost share program for property owners with hazardous trees near their homes and also along riparian corridors, um, but they may also meet some, may need some technical assistance. And if there's any way to leverage our CHI emergency proclamation to highlight us from other applicants and give us a competitive edge, uh, I think adding uh, some uh, verbiage about riparian corridors and the need to, uh, uh, you know, get not only fire hazard vegetation, but water wasting vegetation off those waterways, get us access so we can address other issues, uh, including uh, environmental damage in the creek channels themselves. So if there's any way to add a little love for riparian corridors in this, uh, I would love to see that if the board has consensus for that. Yeah, I. so I, I'm going to just say probably not at this point with this grant. We are looking at helping homeowners remove um, you know, 150 foot tall pine trees that are right next to their house. And people can have seven, eight, ten on a quarter or a third acre lot. And those trees cost $2,000, $4,000, $6,000 to remove each. So, I mean, if, it were, if it's $2,000 a tree, that's 500 trees. And that is a drop in the bucket for what we have to accomplish. So I do encourage you to look for some other opportunities for that work, but this is specifically for fire prevention. And the priorities that the um, LNU has set is um, ingress and egress and fire break um, development and maintenance. So those are the priorities for the grant and the unit, and that's going to be our focus. But I, I do hear that you have those needs, and I, I encourage you to look in other places for those sources. And if I may, I think that that's a great idea that, it, like you said, that is, uh, would give us Lake County a unique angle. So I'll look for additional funding for that because the vegetation in the creeks does help exacerbate flooding. So thank you. Supervisor Spatier? Yeah, just a quick question. Um, I know there's been a lot of work, and I don't believe it's been finalized, or at least it hasn't come to us yet, is the new updated revised CWPP. It's coming. And I, I, I know it's in the works. I, I, I've, I've flipped through it. Um, is this work separate or alongside in utilizing the new updated CWPP as kind of a, a framework of where to focus? 
Yes. Okay. Yes. I, I didn't see it in there, so I just wanted to make sure because yes. I have a feeling that all of our future work will be kind of based off of the, what the CWPP is providing us. Yes, we point everything back to the CWPP. Yeah, and I just wanted to point out that earlier today you heard from uh, community development and one of changing the county code, and one of the items uh, is the adoption of the um, uh, the, inter the Wildland Urban Interface Code, mm -hmm. the 2021 edition. And part of that has in there uh, that I believe it will be your board that will approve designating the WUI, the Wildland Urban, Urban Interface Areas for the county WUI. Um, <laughs> but uh, one of the derivatives will help make that map. Uh, or actually, I think it's a couple of derivatives. So this just has multiple benefits that we, you know, when she started uh, writing the grant uh, to find out how applicable it, it will be once it's funded. Yeah, Thank great. You. Thank you. Any other questions? Public input? Hello again, Mike Ciancio, Fire Chief with North Shore Fire. Um, so first of all, I appreciate being uh, included in <laughs> that $10 million with the fuels crew for sure. Um, but what I would, did want to talk about, and this may address some of uh, Supervisor Green's uh, areas, is um, uh, the, and it's still being built, and Terry knows a lot more about this than I do, but the Scotts Valley Indian Tribe wants to bring those burners into the county. Then they worked on a deal and they're going to need a place for all this vegetation work to go. Um, I've reached out to them because right now we have county properties that we can take all the chips and all the brush to and, and they're perfectly fine with that, but we're just burning it. You light it up. We light, <laughs> end of January every year, it gets lit off of on pile road and uh, goes away. Uh, we collect it for another year and same thing. So all of that, stuff if we collaborate together again partnering together uh, to get all this done and get those burners in place to generate energy uh, and char i guess uh, mm -hmm. not my expertise but um, might be worth looking into and stuff like that um, and again i'm i don't currently staff a faller full-time that can take trees out uh, but I have access to fallers that are certified with PG&E and everything to work next to buildings and power lines and everything. So um, I have access to those people, but uh, as Supervisor Precious said, they are not the cheapest in the world, um, but they, they can get the work done for sure. And if we keep looking for those opportunities, that faller could work with my crew and it would be cleaned up. And it's so. cheaper than doing it next to a house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was going to follow up with that, Chief. I was going to catch you offline about this, but since you brought up the biomass situation, uh, Golden State National Re Golden State uh, Natural Resources, which is a conglomerate of Golden State Finance Authority, which is a, another JPA of RCRC, because they have all those. They're working on a biomass, uh, basically a project in the same aspect. They're working on uh, um, getting it together. They have a railhead uh, going from Tahama to Tuolumne. Uh, they've just uh, reached out and went to a visit at Port, a port in Richmond, um, and they're looking to, because um, there's a high demand for pellets in Europe and Asia, and so with all of our, um, you know, tree mortality situation and all the vegetation, they're looking to put together a program that mitigates that, uh, that risk and also keeps it self-sustaining. I know that they've, gave, they've given a report this last week uh, in the executive uh, board committee um, they anticipate some holdups, but my big, my biggest question, because I met with a couple of the uh, uh, staff members about this, um, was, well, how, how could, how do we get our our product to you all? Um, because obviously, it's going to need to go from 20 to five. And then I was telling them about some of the vegetation in the hills and whatnot, and they. They said that they, you know, that's exactly what this is about also is workforce. And so this may be another thing I'm going to connect with you and, and, and see how we can integrate that as well. So that that way, this is another way to get that product if, you know, it takes time for the other project from Scotts Valley. And um, this is another, uh, I guess, outlet. So we'll talk more offline. Okay. Yeah. Disposal is the issue. biggest the biggest issue. The biggest issue. Uh, we can get the grant funding and we can do the veg work and we can get the trees down, but the disposal is the biggest issue. But luckily, we have a climate officer who is working on that with um, 
all of the partners trying to figure out. The demand from Europe and Asia is because they don't want to utilize uh, coal or any other uh, goods that affect the environment any longer. So the, the pellets are the, are, are the yeah. product that they want. So if we can get into doing that, all of this will, you know, help. They say every challenge is an opportunity. We're trying to find that. Utilize that biomass. <laughs> Thank you, Chiefs, for sticking around. I really appreciate it. Is there any other public input? Anyone there is no anyone, hands in Zoom. Anyone back from the board? Comment? Okay, we'll close this item. Thank you both so much, and um, thank you to the board.